Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Tori, aka Miss NG, the other half of the magic that happens here at thenakedgardeners.com. We are first generation farmers practicing regenerative agriculture here in Northeast Texas. We are committed to no-till gardening, organic practices, and rotational grazing of our animals. Today I want to talk to you about some of the changes that are about to take place going into our third year. Before we came to this homestead, we went to several conferences trying to learn as much as we could about homesteading. I just feel like it's professional pivoting at this point as we go into our third year. I feel like we're pivoting all the time. And when we initially started to do our homework, it was really about what chickens would be right for us. Mr. Naked Gardener did want to start off with rabbits. That just wasn't something I was comfortable with initially. And it wasn't even something that we learned as much about at the conferences. I did not know which chickens we should get. So I'm very happy that we started with an abundance of different breeds. We have some of the Bard Rocks and the Rhode Island Reds, the Naked Necks, which are my favorite, although it, they're not my most favorite now, I'll get to that. That's actually where this conversation's going. We also have some buff Brahmas, some light Brahmas, which by the way, in my opinion, are the most docile of all of the chickens, especially for the roosters. Brahma roosters are by far my most favorite roosters of all. And it's gonna break my heart when I have to part my ways with our rooster, Kevin. As we started our second year, we added some colorful eggs, some Americanas, Easter Eggers, Olive Eggers, and even recently some Fibro chickens, which are just the dark melanated. They're not at the age of laying eggs yet, but very soon. We have decided that we're gonna keep a very small group of egg layers per Mr. Naked Gardener's request because he does want to do some composting experiments with the chickens and they really are great composters. They have been great tilling the land. We recently, for the first time in a year, ran out of eggs. Like I just sold out of eggs and it's just not been a very profitable thing selling eggs. It has been a convenient thing because we have an abundance of eggs with the amount of chickens that we have. The reason I even got Americanas and Easter Eggers is because I wanted to have a prettier look just for customers. I personally don't care if my eggs are brown, white, green, blue. I don't care. I love eggs. Mr. Naked Gardener loves eggs. And honestly, if you guys don't know, duck eggs are our number one choice. That's what we like the most. Now, going into our third year of chickens, we really did do some homework. Anybody that follows along knows, because we've joked about it, Mr. Naked Gardener is a little OCD about some stuff. We're both a little OCD about totally different things, but we kept a spreadsheet over the past year just to get an idea like what's working for us, what's not working for us, because we are a business too. So everything needs to make sense and have a symbiotic relationship with what we're trying to do on our property. And that's including the animals. Now, that also takes into account my experience and my opinions as I take care of the animals primarily. I usually get to have Mr. Naked Gardener on one to two days help me with some of the chores around here, but I deal with the animals on a daily basis. There's some things I like, some things I don't like. I've gotten to know the different breeds that we have. After looking at that spreadsheet, it made the decision easier with me, with the experience that I've had. And I take into account everybody has a different experience. I'm not an expert. We're only working on exactly what is working for us in our documentation. When we started our journey of homework on different chickens to get, the American Breast was the first decision that we knew we were gonna have them at some point. We were a little hesitant and got the egg layers initially at first, but the American Breast shortly followed. Because our focus is on regenerative agriculture and self-sustainability, the American breast for us was a great heritage bird. 
for that because we knew that we weren't going to need to rely on a hatchery with that group. But we had no idea what we were in for from the start. And I'll tell you, if I had all kinds of knowledge of other chickens for years before I had an American breast, they would have seemed like alien chickens to me. And I feel like sometimes I don't emphasize that enough for people that do actually get some from us. I feel like I need to emphasize more that they really are a different chicken, especially if all you know about are Cornish Cross. And we know both. We had American breasts before we ever had Cornish Cross. And now I have both. I have both right now. And I like the Cornish Cross for the quick turnaround on them and how much meat and all types of things but between the two the american breast is definitely my most favorite chicken on our property going into our third year with all of my experience now when i say the american breast is just a different chicken i mean it it's like if you know a cornish cross and you know a light brahma those are two different chickens same thing, uh, we have people that hear that an American breast is a meat bird and they expect it to be like a Cornish cross. There is absolutely no comparison. With that said, I will say that there are a few breeds in our egg layers that I like as far as being just very docile. And initially, when we got our American breast, I don't think we started in the best way but we have upbred into our third generation, and I will just say that it has only gotten better with each upbreeding, with their temperament, how they look, everything about them. This group behind me right now, they have been my absolute favorite of all the chickens I've ever had here. They're just very sweet, they're very smart. It's the first group I haven't even had to clip their wings yet. I know at some point I will because right now they're still getting free feed and when that backs off and they're foraging a little bit more, they get a little bit flighty and I usually do go ahead and trim one wing so that they're not comfortable. They don't like being outside of the fence anyway. The other two groups that we have were the first experience that we had without an aggressive rooster. So they have just grown on me. And the fact that they lay their eggs right at four months, that's amazing. This breed's foraging behavior, robust health, and resilience aligns with our mission. So once I get past some of the little characteristics about each breed, and we're looking at our spreadsheets, and we're seeing this chicken laying eggs right at four months. They average about 250 eggs a year for the hens. And in our zone, growing zone 8A here in Northeast Texas, they have adapted to our climate very well. Uh, we have had them in ice. We've had them in the worst of our storms. We've had them in the worst of the cold weather that we get. And they have a great resilience in each season that we've had. So they got big points for me there. I have not lost any of these birds in a storm. I have on our barnyard mixes, I'll get a random bird that will just die after a really stressful rain uh, or a storm. But I've never lost an American breast in that way. And as a matter of fact, raising these from the incubator on up I've had minimal losses compared to any other breed that I've had here as a chick. So that is something that goes to the testament of our decision making when we're looking at our spreadsheet. What is the most profitable? Well, they're eggs, um, them as chicks. People are interested in starting this breed. It's still relatively not a very common breed to have. Uh, there's still a learning curve with this breed. We were already with them when a lot of large content creators were just starting with them. We were already on our journey with them, learning about them. I like hanging out with this group. <laughs> a naked neck that did this my ugly baby when we first started here 
ugly baby did this. And I thought it was the sweetest thing. And I spend a lot of time with this group because of the reputation this bird sometimes get, especially from bad breeders. Um, there's a reputation of them having bad temperament. I really think that that is a breeding issue. <laughs> but, but, are you gonna come back up here? Um, I really think that the bad behaviors have been maybe a breeding issue. We were new breeders and not initially. We didn't become breeders until we had requests for them and then we felt responsible to look into what we needed to do to be responsible breeders. And being a responsible breeder is upbreeding good qualities. Something me personally, and I'm still a novice, I am not um, an expert. I will never claim to be an expert, but something I have personally seen on the scene is an emphasis on physical characteristics with this breed. This is not a show bird. Um, a lot of people really do. <laughs> a lot of people focus on how they look um, and how their combs are and all these different things. Um, the ugliest bird tastes really good too um, and I want to get on to that focus because this breed aside from having great characteristics being a great bird that you can upbreed and improve any characteristic you want as we have but this particular meat is very tender and very juicy and we're at a stage where we're making improvements as we have learned. American breast meat by far has been the most impressive chicken to me ever. And it did take us doing some comparisons. And I see a lot of comments out there. Um, honestly, I, I only really respect experience. Um, I came to the table, we came to the table as foodies. So that's been part of our experience in this is we're foodies first. That's why we wanted to come and grow our own food. That's why we wanted to be self-sustainable. That's why we wanted to be self-sustainable with the best tasting chicken from the homework that we did. And I'm sure that there's other breeds and I'm, I'm happy to try. Like I would totally do kind of like a, if somebody had a heritage chicken and, and I had meats and we could have a, a meal together very conveniently nearby, I love doing comparisons. Up to this point, with the American breast, part of the challenge is it is a heritage bird. It's not as big as a Cornish cross. And that's the biggest thing that kind of comes up with some people. You cannot compare the two. There is no comparison. This is a breed that you are going to be able to hatch out, have chicks. You can't do that with Cornish cross. So this is self-sustainable off of a hatchery's nipple. And the uh, chickens are going to be a little smaller, which works for us. But they are very tender, they're very juicy, they're great. I feel, depending on when they're actually processed, is how you should cook them. When we initially process them, I want to say our first time was around 14 weeks. Uh, the next time was around 18 to 20 weeks. I'll have to double check those numbers, but I'm pretty close, spot on with that. I personally like it on the younger side. I would prefer to process them if they're going to be for any kind of roasting or on the grill, uh, anywhere that I want them to be tender, I would want to process them about 14 to 16 weeks. Now, what is phenomenally different about this breed, because we've had to cull some of the older birds in our last group, at any age, a year older, they are absolutely delicious in the crock pot. Way better than any stew chicken I've ever had. So they're gonna be a win-win for me. They're always gonna be an amazing chicken broth. They're always going to be an amazing soup. And that stuff is really important if I can grow it right here on our homestead. Some of the hot topics that have come up in speaking on the American breast compared to other breeds is the finish out method. And for us, we have tried it both ways. We've done the fermented corn and raw milk, and we've had some that's not that way, and we have noticed a difference. There has been a genuine question, and, and this is something that we would question too, and we have, 
is, well, what? why do you have to finish that bird out that way for it to be so good? Can't you do that with a Cornish cross or another breed with the same expectation? And the fact is, no. The American breasts have a very balanced muscle to fat ratio that allows them to process the fermented corn different than other breeds. They really, I, I cannot emphasize enough that they really are a different bird. And until you have them, and they even sound different. They even make different sounds than the other chickens. Until you have that, it's hard to really explain it. But I do try to warn people that get the chicks from us or the hatching eggs from us. And by the way, that is something that we've had a learning curve with as well that we have improved is the hatching and not only our hatching rates, but also just transparency with people that want to order hatching eggs. That is not something I'm doing yet. I'm waiting for temperatures to be consistent between anywhere between 50 to 90 degrees. Some people say 50 to 70 degrees but we had good success with the 50 to 90 degrees and the packaging methods that we were using. And also something that we changed is that people have to pick them up at the post office. They're not gonna be delivered to their doorstep. There's a few extra precautionary things we do just to help increase the hatch rate when it's shipped in the mail because historically any eggs that you get shipped in the mail the vitality does decrease because of the shuffling that happens. But we've had really great success with quite a few people, not all people, but uh, we have given out all the advice that we can to make it the most successful that can happen. We also do hatch out one day old chicks. We have a pickup, straight run, 10 order minimum. We're not comfortable shipping them off yet. That we're not there yet. We're not comfortable with that. Maybe one day um, we can learn more about that and get comfortable with it. But right now that's really not where our operation is. And Mr. Naked Gardener and I had a talk. All of these chickens here were ones that we had hatched out for other people that never came to get them uh, that were interested and I'm glad for that actually. I told him that it was really our opportunity to do the expansion that we needed to do. We have some green fires in here, we have three different age groups in here and we are about to go through and look at the characteristics, look at the temperament, all the things before we merge them into our other groups and figure out how many roosters we have because those are obviously going to be some meat birds. When spring comes in March, a conversation I had with Mr. Naked Gardener is our expansion is going to come before anybody else as far as expanding our meat production, our groups, and then if I have extras, if people want to pre-order um, and check with us ahead of time, that is absolutely fine. I really am focused on expanding just our American breast operation and utilizing them. Some of my favorite things about them, aside from all the things that I have mentioned, is they do not tear up the grass nearly as bad as any of our other groups. They do not eat as much as they do and they are much better foragers. So it's, it's a win-win in my opinion. And mind you, I take care of these animals every day. I'm watching their behavior. And these are winning characteristics in my book. I feel like I went over a long list of reasons why we're going in this direction. Self-sustainability, amazing meat, having eggs at four months, just foraging and viability. Those are an awful lot of reasons why this bird is my favorite and why we're expanding in this direction. I know many of us, and us included, do raise Cornish Cross just for more of a bulk meat option. Right now, the American breast is a little bit more of a private thing for us and I've only sold some to people that have like picked up chicks and kind of want to know about that meat. We have recently discussed with a USDA processor about processing some chickens with them so that we can make that available to the public. We are not there yet, uh, but that is a direction that we are going to be going. Um, we just believe in self-sustainability. We believe in 
what these chickens offer our property. I would encourage any of you to look at a heritage breed. It doesn't have to be American Brass. It can be any breed that can allow you to be self-sustainable. If you want to find out more information about the American Breast or just have general questions, you can always email us at teamholland77 at gmail.com. It is in our notes below. If you want to see when we started to make some changes, some big changes that actually pivoted us to be to the quality that we have now, I'll put that video off to the side and in the show notes below. And until the next time, let's grow together.